So one thing as well, and, and again, just to touch on what you've just said about mining equipment specifically. So this is something kind of in relation to, I guess you could call it Moore's Law and the efficiency of mining equipment, say, doubling every year or every two years. I can't remember the specifics of Moore's Law. But how frequently, I know you said during a bull market, older equipment will still be profitable. But how often are miners looking to upgrade their equipment? And are we potentially getting to a point of diminishing returns where miners have gotten so efficient that maybe... There's only so much more that they can output per unit of electricity. How, how is the mining hardware side of things looking and, and how much is that taken into consideration from miners? Fantastic question, Matt. So this is something we've, we've researched extensively at Blockware, and I've pulled up a chart on screen, really, really more of a table. And this shows the progression of Bitcoin miners over the last decade. And, you know, Bitmain, they make great machines, but they're not known for being creative with the naming conventions, right? You've got the S1, the S7, S19, down the S21. And the latest machine as of, uh, as of Q3 of last year is the S21 XP. And, and the names don't really matter. What we're looking at is watts per terahash. So terahash, that's, that's the, power, the, the power of the miner. If we were going to compare it to a car, that would be like miles per hour. What, what's your top speed? But what we care about is watts per terahash. So that's more like uh, miles per gallon if we're using the car analogy. How efficient, you know, how many hashes can you actually get per unit of energy as the input? And so you can see early on when you went from the S1 to the S3 to the S7, you're making major jumps in efficiency. You went from 2,000 watts per terahash to 800 to 275. These are big jumps, right? And, and the effect of this is if you had an S1, by the time the S9 comes out, you're done. That machine is not profitable anymore. It, you know, hash rate's gone, gone up so much. Mining difficulty's gone up so much. You have to consistently upgrade your machines as the new ones come out. But what we're seeing is the efficiency gains between each new generation machine, it's marginal. So the S21 XP is more efficient than the S21 Pro, but only by 10%. If you bought an S21 Pro in Q2 of 2024, when the S21 XP comes out six months later, you're not in that bad of a position, right? You, you still have a very profitable, very powerful machine. And so uh, here's another chart kind of just showing this uh, on a graph, right? You can see the energy efficiency, you know, it's, they're getting more efficient here in this orange line, but the, the gains are, are actually diminishing. And when you look at hash rate historically, this chart is in log scale. You can clearly see the growth rate is flattening out. So between 2010 and 2015, you, know, you went up each, this is log scale. So this is an order of magnitude, right? You went up 10 orders of magnitude in just a couple of years, but now hash rate growth is really flattening out. And there's kind of a, a, a couple effects this has on the industry. So first is, like I said, machines are going to have a longer lifespan. Historically, you had to upgrade consistently, but now we're seeing machines actually remain profitable for four to, to even as many as eight years, right? Depending on the electricity rate. And this it, it results in kind of a natural migration, right? So if you have, let's say you're on the higher end of a power cost, somewhere around the nine to 10 cent per kilowatt hour, you're going to need the most efficient machines. But if you're mining with two to three cent per kilowatt hour electricity, you can get, get away with an S19 or something, something really low cost, right? And so machines kind of naturally migrate to the lowest source of uh, lowest cost power, these older, older generation machines. The second effect is, a we say, a declining hash rate delta, which just means the growth rate of hash rate is declining. And th the main point about this is when I mentioned at the beginning of this, this show, there's two ways to grow hash rate. You can get new efficient, new, new machines that are more powerful, more efficient, or you can produce more mining infrastructure. That becomes the primary method by which hash rate can actually grow now. Physical infrastructure and energy production is the bottleneck because if new machines are only making a marginal increase in, in overall hash rate, then you're going to have to actually build out new sites to really get that growth in hash rate that we've seen historically. And as I mentioned before, that stuff can't happen overnight. You can't build a site from, from zero to hashing in, in two weeks, right? Versus the Bitcoin price, it can go up 50% in two weeks. We've seen that before. And so this creates a, what I think is going to be an interesting opportunity for Bitcoin miners. People view it as you know an industry with 
historically diminishing revenues and diminishing profits simply because of difficulty in the block subsidy. But I think we're going to see, you know, if, if Bitcoin really starts to take off, you're going to see a period of really explosive profitability for Bitcoin miners because of the, the inability for difficulty to really uh, increase at the same rate that the Bitcoin price can.